Told me it wasn't no cash in the but just like it wasn't no room in the caddy. What? I had to lap him up. Now I'm in the gym doing two a days. Push, push, push. Now I'm in the gym doing two a days. Push, push, push. And I'm getting money in any way. All I know is going getting paid. My moving weight like every day. Now I'm in the gym doing two a days. I'm in the gym doing two a days. Push, push, push. I'm in the gym doing two a days. Let's run it up. Guys, welcome today. This is Coach Carl Reed with the Run Up the Score podcast. I have a real special guest today that I'm really excited about, Coach Jeff Thorne from the North Central College, the Division Three, the reigning Division Three national champions. Hi, Coach. How you doing? I'm doing great, Coach. How about you? I'm doing real well. You know, Coach, um, I'm excited to have you on. We've had a lot of coaches on, you know, FBS, FCS, Division Two. JUCO, and uh, I deal a lot on Twitter with kids that send me information. Everybody's trying to find a college to go to. I have my own players in my own program. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people are not real familiar with Division Three. I know that, you know, most people that are football purists know about Mount Union and, and, and Wisconsin Whitewater, but you're the king of the mountain right now, and you've done a great job you know, building your program. Can you explain to us a little bit your coaching career and where you've been up until the point that you got here and 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 a little tell us a little bit about the program that you built there at North Central? Absolutely. Uh, again, appreciate the opportunity. Mount Union and Whitewater certainly have been uh, kind of the holy grail of Division Three football, Mount Union in particular, uh, for the last 25 years. And uh we ran into them in the 2013 semifinals and lost a heartbreaker to them 41-40 in the snow. Uh, we missed five extra points in that game. So it was really uh, such a great opportunity this year to get a chance to play them again at their place in the second round. We were fortunate enough to knock them off, and then we got to play Wisconsin-Whitewater in the national championship game. So we got to go through the two two teams that have been really the, the measuring stick in Division Three. Right. Uh, you know, my coaching – journey is a little different than most guys. I, uh, I played four years at Eastern Illinois University, was a quarterback there and uh, got out of college and uh, found my way into the financial services industry for 13 years. Mm -hmm. My father's a legendary high school coach or was in Illinois, uh, had won several state titles in the 90s and he was offered the head job at North Central in 2002. And, and so at that point, he asked me to come and coach the quarterbacks, which I thought, you know what, I could do both. And so I was running a book of business and finance and coaching the quarterbacks uh, and running the offense here for seven years uh, before coming full time to coaching in 2009. Um, so was the offensive coordinator from 2002 to 2014. And, and when my father retired, the, the college was gracious enough to offer me the head job. And uh, it's been an incredible blessing. So, again, my, my story is a little different from a coaching standpoint, uh, being the son of a coach. Um, but it's been the best decision I've ever made, you know, and, and in terms of North Central College, we're uh, we're a school located in Naperville, Illinois, which is 30 miles west of Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, our students have access to internships and just great job opportunities being here in the in the Chicago suburbs. Naperville is a city of about 150,000 people uh, with a ton of big business and uh, all sorts of different kinds of medium and small businesses that our, our student body and our athletes can really leverage to put together a great resume as an undergrad. So it's really a great combination of outstanding academics and then athletically, our football programs uh, won our first national championship, but we, we have a track and cross country program that is, is really the, the, the measuring stick in, in the nation for Division Three. From that standpoint, our basketball and baseball teams have been uh, final four participants. So athletics is really important to North Central College. We've got an administration that's incredible in terms of supporting us and giving us the resources we need. So when you couple those things together for an aspiring young guy that wants to look at that playing college football and doesn't maybe have the scholarship opportunities, uh, I think we've got a, com a pretty compelling brand when you when you look at the total package, academics, uh, career opportunities, and then and then the football itself. So coach, at the Division Three level, particularly your recruiting model, kind of walk us through the recruiting process for you. Are you trying to, to have it all done by the quote-unquote national signing day? Are you continuing to look at guys throughout the year? Um, are you having area recruiters, position recruiters? 
kind of give us a little bit about your philosophy and your plan from a recruiting standpoint? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. I think it's important for young people to understand at our level, we typically are going to lag the scholarship schools for, for a number of reasons. We don't necessarily have the same resources they have to send coaches out nationally. So we're regional. Uh, we're going to really blanket the surrounding states of Illinois. Uh, we get down in Florida. Uh, this year, we actually, you know, being the national champion, it certainly uh, increased our presence on a national level. So we've got Arizona, Colorado, Ohio, Florida, uh, North Carolina, a lot of uh, student athletes from, from across the country that have found us. Uh, but generally speaking, we're going to blanket the Midwestern states. Um, and we're just looking for young guys that love the game and they're high character kids and, and they want to get a great education. Uh, we do not have things done by signing date. In fact, that's, that's still fairly early uh, in the game for us. If, if we can have our recruiting class really uh, sewn up by the time March comes to a close and we feel pretty good about it. Mm -hmm. um, but we're typically going to lag. And, and a lot of those kids that maybe believe they're going to get a scholarship late Oftentimes when that doesn't happen, that, that's where we can come in. And, and we want to talk to those kids uh, from the very beginning. Um, we, we want to shoot for the stars with the kids that we're talking to and um, land some of those guys that, that may have been scholarship level players. And, and fortunately, we've got a few. Our quarterback signed with the 49ers uh, after our national championship game and, and the NFL draft. He was an Indiana State recruit out of high school, had a full ride there, and things just didn't work out. A uh, Naperville kid went to Nequa Valley High School. He transferred down to us and, you know, set the NCAA Division Three record for passing yards in a career. Uh, so we get a handful of those, like, you know, bounce back guys as well. So, Coach, what does a North Central College athlete look like? What is it when you're when you're going and you're recruiting? Like, what are some of the specifics that you're looking for? Are you looking for guys, certain size, speed, weight? Do you still have those measurables? Or are you just looking for guys who love to play? Like, because I think one of the biggest misconceptions with recruiting is that you can just go to a Division three school if you if you put on a helmet and shoulder pads in high school, and that's not true either, right? No. So, no, so that's not. That's not. I mean, we're not going to tell unless a, unless a young man is going to get himself hurt by being a part of our program. Um, we'll let them come out for the team, mm -hmm. but. But, Coach, our, our roster is full of guys that were all-state players uh, in high school, maybe multiple-time all-state players that maybe aren't quite big enough or quite fast enough for the highest level. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a receiver on our team right now that broke national records last year, too, coming back for one more year. Um, Andrew Kaminsky, he's going to have a chance to, to be in a camp next year. So we're, you've got an awful lot of really high-level uh, high school players. He was an all-state player in high school here in Illinois. Um, but we've got a lot of all state players that, that haven't found the field yet that are going to be juniors. So it gives you somewhat of an idea of the, the competitive balance right. at, at the top tier programs in division three, Wisconsin, Whitewater and, and Mount union and St. Thomas and Mary Harden Baylor and those schools, they, they're having the same, uh, conversations that you and I are having their, their rosters right. are loaded with extremely talented guys. So, so coach, what does, so from a, um, from a roster standpoint, how many guys are you bringing in a year? What kind of roster size do you have? Um, how many guys do you bring in in each class? It's going to depend. Uh, this year we brought in about 65 recruits, which is a lot. Um, our roster started, you know, before we had the, the pandemic and, you know, we had our season canceled. Our roster was a, right at 150 players. Mm -hmm. And it will be again when we come back around. Um, now, when you add this next recruiting class, it's really going to swell. So it's going to be interesting to see how we navigate through that. And that'll be challenging, but we're, we're looking forward to that opportunity. Uh, we run a full JV schedule, though. So that number sounds really big, that we're going to play nine or ten JV games. So every player in our program is playing a football game on a weekly basis, right. whether it's on Saturday with our varsity or Sunday or Monday. Um, depends on where they're at in, in you know, from a skill standpoint and, and really from a maturity level as well. Mm -hmm. Now, through the recruiting process or when, when recruiting was going on before everything got shut down, a lot of people that played in your league, uh, when they came through my school to recruit, talked about your quarterback. And you just mentioned them getting picked up by the, by the 49ers. For yep. uh, we, we always hear people when they talk about small school football say that 
if you're if you're good enough, they'll find you, right? Mm -hmm. So what kind of was the process so guys can hear when you had a guy that's on the NFL roster right now that got picked up, what was kind of the process for him and how much how regularly were NFL scouts through there evaluating him? And at what point was he identified as a guy that could potentially play in the pros? You know, I think the NFL scouts knew about him going into his senior year. And I think it was really important that he had a great senior year uh, because he had put up really impressive numbers to that point. And, and then he followed through and had a terrific season. We've had some other players that have been in the same position. We had a linebacker back in 2010. His name was Matt Wanger, was the National Defensive Player of the Year. And that year, he had, we had about 28 NFL scouts come through to watch him. Unfortunately, that was the year the NFL went on strike. Um, oh, yeah. So it was really tough for free agents in general, certainly small college free agents. It was a, it was even more difficult. But he played uh, four games in that UFL, if you remember the league. That yeah, was I remember created. that. So I remember he played that. in that league. The following year, we had a tight end um, whose brother has been in the NFL for quite some time now, last name of Fedorowicz. C.J. Mm -hmm. Fedorowicz is the, is the guy that played in the NFL. Kyle was his older brother. He was in the Saints camp after his senior year. So we've had some players uh, that have gotten those opportunities, Brock being the most recent, but our, our number one rival in our conference is Wheaton College. And they've had, a, they've had a small handful of guys that have made it to the league as well. So it's, again, you go back to if you're good enough, they're going to find you. And in the case of Brock, he just had an unbelievable season. He's, he's wildly accurate. He loves the game. He's a football junkie. And, and from a measurable standpoint, standpoint, he's, you know, six, one and a half, 210 pounds coming out of here. And he's, he's up to about 225 now. Um, but I just think his, his attitude about, about the game and he's just got a, he's got a wonderful demeanor to him that, that the 49ers really gravitated to, uh, early in the process. So he kind of knew that was the place he'd like to land. And fortunately it all worked out for him. So if I'm a, if I'm a player on your team, mm -hmm. uh, what's a typical day for me? What is my, what does my day look like? Is there a lot of difference between what you guys are doing from a year round standpoint? than what the division one schools are doing and what the higher levels are doing. Uh, if I'm a, if I'm coming into your school as a freshman, what can I expect? Well, is this, is this pre COVID or COVID? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Let's, let's talk pre COVID. Yeah. yeah right. Let's talk pre COVID. Okay, Hopefully so, we can get so back into some of that. Yeah. Pre COVID. Um, you know, we, we, we're going to, we're going to give them Mondays off during the season and, and have a typical practice schedule. We, we do some things, faith, family, and academics come first here. And then football is, is really not the top priority. Uh, now, having said that, it's still really important to us. We want to put a great product out there, but we really want to make sure our young men are growing as individuals. Uh, that's the, that's the most important thing that I think we have a responsibility as, as, as coaches. So we take a couple of our meetings that week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we'll spend about 45 minutes talking about a particular character trait. And, and it's we've got a manual that we give them, so it's all scheduled out. Uh, so that's really been useful for us. But uh, they have Monday off. Tuesdays we're going to practice, and we'll have that meeting with them about character that spills into football. Wednesdays, typical practice day. Thursday, just like Tuesday, Friday, we're doing a walkthrough um, and having a chapel service. And, you know, I get a chance to address the team. We play our games on Friday, or Saturdays. And then on Sunday, uh, our guys come in, get a lift in. Our varsity guys and our JV guys get a chance to play a football game. That's a typical in-season day. Uh, yeah. So not, not much different, I don't think, than, than Div Division One level from a time commitment standpoint. When we get into the off-season, that's where we're a little bit different. We can't have mandatory workouts in the wintertime. Okay. So it's all voluntary. Uh, as you can imagine, successful programs are going to do a great job of, of holding each other accountable so the guys get in there and get their lifting in. And then when we get to the spring season, we typically are able to have 16 practices um, but we can't wear pads. Okay. So that's the, that's the major difference between our level and the division one level in the summertime. We cannot have um, any interaction with them on the field. You know, we can communicate with them if they wanted to watch film and come in and they scheduled it, they could do that. Okay. What is the, what are the academic standards to get into to North central from a GPA mm -hmm. and an ACT standpoint? What does a kid need to have if he wants to be at your university and be a part of your program? You know, typically we're looking for a 2.5 core GPA, um, and then we're looking for an ACT somewhere above a 22. Now, that's not to say that we haven't worked with young men that, that don't have those numbers. Uh, I can tell you that nationally, and you probably know this, Coach Reed, but nationally 
a lot of schools are getting away from the testing requirement. North Central yeah. being one of those. So really a GPA of, of two, five or higher, and they're going to have an opportunity to, to be enrolled or be accepted here at North Central. Mm. What, how would, it, how would tuition break down? So explain to people, the division three does not give athletic scholarships, right? Correct. So right. what's some of the things that they can do to help cut the cost, whether it's academically, whether it's work study, like what are some of the things guys are doing to, to help cover that bill? Well, I can tell you the average discount rate at our school is over 50%. So you've okay. got a tuition room and board number, take take 50% off of that. And that's what the average student is paying here. Mm -hmm. uh, academic scholarship based on their GPA and their test score, if they submit the test score, could be a combination of those two. Uh, financial standing, you know, what's the family's financial need? And, and if the state, uh, if they're Pell eligible, the government, federal government's going to th throw money in. If, they, if they're an Illinois student, they may also have uh, MAP capabilities. Uh, so really, it's dependent upon those things, but the students can look at outside scholarships, um, getting involved with that, and, and really talking to people who have expertise in planning for college is something I would recommend to every young family. Uh, mm -hmm. as they're preparing for college, because there's ways, you know, again, going back to my prior career in finance, there's ways to position dollars um, that is beneficial when you go to apply for schools and mm -hmm. how the government and how schools are looking at where dollars are. What is coach? So how many coaches do you have on your staff? How many full time guys are you allowed to have? So I think we're recruiting a lot. Guys get accustomed to you know, those guys in the SEC and Big Ten, right. they're flying in on private jets. They got the huge salaries, right? Yeah. What is it like for an assistant at the Division three level? And are there opportunities for – is that a good place for young coaches who want opportunities to coach in college to come in and kind of cut their teeth and build relationships so they can move up and move on in their coaching careers? Yeah, for sure. It's a, another great question. We have five full-time coaches. Uh, that includes me. And then we have three full-time graduate assistants. We also have five or six part-time coaches that I'm able to give stipends to. Um, all three of our GAs currently are former players of ours. Um, so I think it's a great way. If a young guy wants to get into coaching, this is a really good place because we have the graduate assistant program. And the other thing, Coach, I would include, we've been running satellite camps uh, for the last several years, up until this year, obviously, with, with COVID-19 again. Yeah. But... You know, we brought we brought over 1,100 kids on campus last year. I think we had 11 or 12 major Power Five schools that have come through in the last two three years, and I, I can't even count how many FCS programs and D2 programs uh, that have been here to evaluate young guys. So, Brock Rudder, our quarterback, uh, give you an example with him after his freshman year here. We're working our camp, and Kirk Soraka, who at the time was Minnesota's offensive coordinator. Oh, yeah, I know Kirk. Um, you know, we had this technology that was working to help us really run the camp efficiently and keep people safe, and the technology uh, went down. Well, Brock just took over because I was coaching, and, and Brock recognized I needed to keep coaching. So he took over and got everything organized, and we didn't miss a beat. And Coach Soraka asked me after the camp, he said, who is that? I said, well, that's our quarterback. And he said, well, I, I want to hire him someday. He was so impressed by him. And I said, well, you're going to have to wait a little while. He's a freshman. Um, <laughs> right. But those are the kind of opportunities that our players work our camps with us. And mm -hmm. our camps have been really successful as a result of the work of our players. We'll have any, anywhere from 18 to 20 players working those camps. That's a chance for those kids to meet these coaches at the higher levels mm -hmm. and, uh, and really create uh, a network of guys that maybe they can tap into when that time comes to, to look to move, move up or, or just get into coaching in general. Coach, you mentioned at the beginning of the show uh, that your dad is a, is a legendary high school coach in Illinois. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a, a little bit about your dad, what his name is and where he coached at and, yes. um, and a little bit about his program and what kind of made them elite and, and made his program special too? Yeah. Yeah. His, his name is John Thorne. He was the head coach at Wheaton Central High School and then it became Wheaton Warrenville South, and, and that's where he won his state titles. Four, four state championships in the 90s, uh, and then he finished second twice as well. In 1998, he had a quarterback that threw 60 touchdown passes in one season. Uh, John wow. Butcher was his name, went on to play at uh, – start at Illinois uh, for three years. But, you know, everything I've said about our program now, all I'm doing is, 
is really photocopying what he's put in place. And, and we're trying to make sure we, we keep this train moving because he's the one who set it on the course that we've been on. Uh, he's really the one that did the heavy lifting. We were fortunate to be able to get it, get things done for, for him last year. And I'll tell you the most satisfying thing I was able to do when the, when the game was finally over was hand him the national championship trophy because for 13 years, 14 years, he was our head coach here. And, uh, and he is the guy that's put us in this position. North Central coach hadn't had a winning season uh, since 1987 when wow. my dad was hired in 2002. They only had three conference championships in their history, 1946 and 47, and then 1960. And, and we've been fortunate to win uh, 11 conference championships since, and then last year's national championship. And a really, really good conference. Our, our conference last year ended with us winning it, and Wheaton College finished ranked fifth. So we were the only conference in the country with two teams in the top five when it was all said and done. Uh, but, you know, I, I would tell you that the whole idea of faith, family, academics before football, that's my dad. Mm. You know, that's him. Uh, and, and the character building initiative uh, he's had in place since his years in high school. Uh, we added a little twist to it. I, I had read a book by Jim Trestle called The Winner's Manual. Yeah, uh, I got that book right up here on my shelf. It's one of the best books I've ever yeah. read. So our Cardinal Manual, Coach, is, is really designed largely after the Winner's Manual and some of the ideas there. Uh, my son is is a redshirt freshman quarterback at Michigan State, and under Mark D'Antonio, they had a manual. And so I got a copy of his. Coach D'Antonio had been with Coach Dressel. So, um, you know, there's just been a lot of things that have come into place. And, uh, again, I, I just think it's – What's allowed us to be really successful here are the things that my dad thought were important 30 years ago in coaching. Um, and that's making sure the well-being of your student athlete is, is your top priority, not wins and losses, not X's and O's. Now, you, you, you're getting into something that's near and dear to my heart, and, and I don't think people talk about it enough. And you're talking about the culture of your program, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Do, you, do you feel like that culture, when young men come into it, that that culture can change them for the better? That it, that it sets them on a better path to be better men, better fathers, better husbands? Well, Coach, I'll tell you, if it doesn't, then I didn't do my job. Um, I absolutely believe with all of my being that the culture here uh, allows young men to grow into exactly what you're talking about. Great husbands, great fathers, great employees, difference makers in our world. And God knows we need that right now. And right. that's the challenge. You know, we have we talk all the time here about the beauty of game, the game. And I heard, I heard Trent Dilfer earlier today um, on, a, on a podcast similar to this, talking about the goodness of football. I thought it, he did, it was beautiful, but there's so many things this game teaches you and, and guys that, that don't look like me and don't look like you. And we come together and, and we love each other. And that's really the, the word we use in our program as much as anything is that it's love because if love leads, if, if the motive behind everything you're doing is love, then, man, you're going to have some great things happen to you. You can't guarantee it, right? But at the, at the very worst, you're going to have some amazing relationships when you graduate and, and move on into the rest of your life. And we just think this is a great springboard for young guys to, uh, to learn what life can be like. And, and the challenge I give them all is make sure, guys, when you graduate here, you take the locker room experience you had here, you take it into your home, you take it into your community, you take it into your place of business, and, uh, and make sure people know there's a, there's a better way, there's a different way. And, and if we value each other and we respect each other's differences and, and we see each other the same way God sees us, which is the same, mm -hmm. then, man, some really good things can happen and relationships can flourish. Now, Coach, you, you talked at the beginning about um, your quarterback being a record-breaking passer. You talked about your dad's quarterback, 60 touchdown passes in one season. And now your son is a red shirt freshman quarterback at Michigan State. So it seems like quarterbacking is the family business, right? And he, and, and, <laughs> that's, and he, that's, yeah, yeah, that's the position I play too. So yeah, so yeah that's, that's a position near and dear to my heart yeah. for sure. And you, you guys are throwing the ball around quite a bit. How are you playing on offensively? What, what system and schematically are you doing on offense? You know, ironically, we're not, I'm not, I'm, I'm a guy that wants to run the ball. Honestly, mm -hmm. we want to run the ball first and set up play action pass and, you know, we're, we're extremely efficient in the passing game, um, high completion percentage, uh, but we're going to get in multiple formations and run a spread-based offense out of multiple personnel groups. Uh, mm -hmm. So we use 
two tight ends uh, at times. Uh, we're going to certainly have 10 per- personnel on the field, maybe 20% of the time. But I, we want to run the ball first. Uh, I didn't mention our running back last year led the nation in, in rushing yards, rushing touchdowns, and total touchdowns. Mm. So we're, still, we're going to run the ball first, and then we're going to set up play-action pass. And if we've got a really effective quarterback, which we've been blessed to have uh, most of the time we've been here, then we've got a chance to be really efficient as an offense in general. Now, Coach, from a from a uh, a COVID standpoint, did they move your guys' conference into the spring? Or they did. You guys, okay, yeah. how yes. what, what does that look like for you? Like, how are you able to manage that? Um, are you positive that we still will get to play in the spring, even though they moved it back? Like, what are some of your thoughts about uh, moving football back to the spring? Am I positive? I can't say I'm positive. I think I'm confident that that's the direction we're going. Uh, there's a, there, the Mount Union's conference has scheduled games already for the spring, I think five games. And that would be really what we're looking to do, five or less, because if we stay at five or less, all of our players will be able to come back without losing any eligibility. Okay. Uh, so really, right now, we, we had our guys report August 13th. We tested them, and we quarantined them over the weekend. We came out of quarantine actually two days ago in the evening. So yesterday was the first day we were able to do anything with them. We just, we're going to take it nice and slow. We're, we're going to get them back into shape. So we were on the field doing some conditioning work yesterday, had them in the weight room today, and we're going to continue with that for a few weeks. And the NCAA it has allowed us to actually hold actual football practices throughout the fall. Okay. Um, so we're going to put the pads on sometime in mid to late December and really treat it much like a division one spring season okay. and, and let them bang around and compete against each other. And, Honestly, I think it's a great opportunity for our young players to to learn our system and learn what college football looks like and, and really the speed of the game. So, Coach, I'm a young player. Um, I thought I should have been playing in the Big Ten, mm-hmm. all right, but it didn't work out for me. The FCS schools are also passing me by. All right, tell me why I should come play for you at North Central. Tell me, tell me what am I going to get out of it and why I should come and help you compete for championships. Well, number one, you're going to get a great education at, at a, a really, really elite college in an amazing city. Naperville has been named the number one place to raise a family in America like five times in the last 20 years. It's a, it's a great city. Uh, so they'll be in a great environment where they can really, as I mentioned at the beginning, really put together an incredible resume. At the end of the day, if you're coming to our level, um, the chances of playing at the NFL level are, are not very high. At the same time, I would I, I would tell that young man, if you're good enough, they'll find you, as we've talked about. Uh, but they're going to get a great education, and they're going to grow as a young man. Uh, we're going to invest in them as a human being. They're going to generate incredible relationships. Uh, I would say that the people they meet here will be the guys that stand in their wedding. And it'll be an amazing experience, and we'll have a ton of fun. And we're going to have a chance to play for a national championship again. And when you're on that stage... Uh, I don't care if it's the Division Three level. It's on ESPN. And, and when you're on that stage playing in a season like that against the best competition in Division Three, that's where you have the best opportunity to be noticed. Well, Coach, I appreciate you coming on and, and, and taking the time. You're doing an excellent job. I know that I'll be sending you some information on the prospects from my school soon. And you're definitely a school that guys should check out. If people wanted to get in contact with you, either through social media, if they, if, if a young man wanted to play for you and wanted to reach out to you on where to send recruiting uh, film and what like that, how can they get in contact with you? Uh, they can shoot me an email. They can reach out to me via Twitter. Uh, my, my Twitter handle is at card HCJT. Um, yeah, those, those are the best ways. My email address is jathorn527 at noctrl.edu. And, uh, man, I'd, I'd love to have the opportunity to talk to your players and anybody else that has an interest in getting a great education in a great community and playing the highest level of Division three football. And, Coach, I can't thank you enough for this opportunity. Uh, you know, I've followed you on Twitter for a long time. I love what you stand for. Uh, I love the tweets you put out there. And I'm a big fan of yours. So, Again, thanks for this opportunity and look forward to continuing uh, to build our relationship. Coach, I appreciate it. And when this when we get out of COVID, I'm going to come up there and visit with you um, awesome. and how you take me around the campus in the town. And um, so we can see and we'll try to get you some young men from our area up there to help you keep winning. That'd be great. Look forward to it, Coach. Thanks again. All right. Thank you. OK. Coach Jeff Thorne, head football coach at North Central College in Naperville, Illinois has built North Central College 
into a Division Three powerhouse, winning last season's national championship. A lot of young people do not want to take the opportunities they get at smaller colleges, but it's great football played at that level. Their record-breaking quarterback this year is currently on the roster with the San Francisco 49ers. It's definitely a program to look into, and he's doing an incredible job. This is the Run Up the Score podcast. Keep working.